Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord some glory. Give the glory in this place. Praise the Lord. Can't wait to see what God has to say to us today. Amen. Thank God for the opportunity, gentlemen, that we could gather together to hear from Him. Today I want to share a word shared in our last meeting and I titled the message very strong title fire all the hirelings and don't think that I'm sitting here tonight behind this pulpit saying that I got it all figured out or I'm coming against any particular organization. Today, all I'm sharing today is what God has given me, what's on His heart. And today, let's receive it. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Book of John, chapter 10. Jesus was told, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hired him. He who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling. And he does not care about the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. Jesus, he's giving the, this is pretty much clear, so I'm told of Jesus. Giving the difference between a hireling and a shepherd. And today we're going to look at the attributes of a hireling versus a shepherd. But before I go any further, I want to share this with you. Uh, a while ago back, uh, a few years ago, I met a pastor. And he told me something. Because if I don't preach, I don't eat. <clears throat> I was so upset what he said. It bothered me. Because this man says the reason why he took on this role of a pastor is because of the benefits. Amazing. And I'm just going to clear the air. Guys, your pastor says it. That's one. <laughs> but it bothered me because... The reason why this man says that he's a pastor is because of the financial gain. But I quickly understood that not every pastor who sits behind this pulpit is a shepherd. Not every man who says that they're a pastor, not every person who you call a pastor necessarily is a shepherd. So there's, there's a few things that we're going to look today of what's the difference. They who are, who are a hireling and those who are a shepherd. And don't get me wrong, of course, those who proclaim the gospel according to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14, they, they should get their pay, though I'm a topic of, but if, uh, for the pastors to get their pay. Then that's fine, that's okay. But if the only reason why you step into ministry <coughs> is for profit, you got the wrong job description. And after all, it would change the, the, the physical uh, payment. It, 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 you can make more money 
They're going back to work. That, as simple as that. But today I, I want to just give a definition. <coughs> and I have the definition of the next slide of, of, of a hireling. Definition of a hireling is a, a wage worker, one who gets paid. Jesus said, he said it best because he gives us a better understanding of what is a hireling in, in the John chapter 10 verses 12 through 13. But a hireling, he is, he is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves, and the sheep and flees and, and he scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is the hireling and he does not care about the sheep. Well, hireling, he has no concern for the sheep of God. The hireling has no concern uh, of, the, the, of the well-being, spiritual well-being of the sheep. Doesn't care. He's there for one purpose, to get his pay. That's it. So, what is the difference between a hireling and a shepherd? Their, their motives. Their motives, you'll, you'll see the difference. The, the reason why you... The reason why they take care of the sheep, the reason why they get behind the pulpit, you see their, you, you'll see their, their motive. You see what, how they present themselves. You see their concern. I touch is God will reveal that to you. <clears throat> the reason why you take the role of a pastor is to take care of the sheep of God. The hireling does it for his own benefit. He has no concern for the sheep of God. We go to the next slide in the in Ezekiel 34 verses 1 through 10. It's a lot of reading, but this is what God wants to say. This is on his heart. Verse 1, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to those shepherds, thus says the Lord God, Woe, shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Question. You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fat sheep without feeding the flock. Those who are sickly, you have, no, you have not strengthened. The disease, you have not healed. The broken, you have not bound up. The scattered, you have not brought back. Nor have you sought for the loss. But what force and what severity you have dominated them. They were scattered. So then they were scattered for the lack of a shepherd. And they become food for every beast of the field. And were scattered. My flock wandered through all the mountains, and on every high hill, my flock was scattered over the faces of the earth, the surface of the earth, and there was no one to search or seek for them. Go to the next slide, verse 7. Therefore you shepherds, therefore you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord, as I live, declares the Lord God, surely, because my flock has become prey, my flock has become food for all the beasts of the field for lack of a shepherd. And my shepherds did not search for my flock. But rather, the sheep feed themselves. The shepherds feed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds. I am against the shepherds, and I will demand my sheep from them and make them cause from feeding sheep. So the shepherds will not feed themselves anymore, but I will deliver my flock from their mouth, so they will not be food for them. Let's go to the next slide to look at the the motives of the hiring. Well, verse 2 with Tola Del Pica, they feed themselves and not the sheep. 
This is their concern, is themselves. They, they feed themselves. Verse 3, they, they eat the fat and they clothe themselves with wool, but do not feed the flock. They want to reap every benefit from the title pastor. And they don't care for the flock of God. Verse 4, it's, it shows us that because they care for, that they don't care for the weak, the sick, the broken, the scattered, or the, the lost sheep of God. They, their motives of a hireling, they're, they're all about themselves. You cannot be a pastor and not care for the sheep of God. You, you, cannot, you cannot take the role of a, of a minister, a, of, a, of a man who presents the word of God, you, and not care for the sheep of God. This is God's concern. It's always been God's concern. His sheep. The flock of God, they need a shepherd and not a boss. That's not what they need. The reason why the flock is scattered is because of a lack of a shepherd. The reason why the, the, the sheep are hurt, the reason why they're, they're scattered, the reason why they don't have a place to call home and, and be fed and be taken care of is because there, there's not a place where they could find a shepherd. Sometimes pastors get caught up in their title and they forget about the responsibilities. Why? Because they're looking for the prophet. They're looking for what, 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 they could, what they could reap from it. But here's the truth. The truth is this, that the motives will show the difference between a shepherd and a hireling. We have a responsibility that comes with this, with this title, pastor. But nowadays we treat it like it's nothing. We treat this title like it's nothing. Such as you go anywhere and everybody's a pastor. But we need to remember something. This title, Nayamaro title, this title was not given to us by man. We share a title with Jesus, the great shepherd. If we could understand that, pastors, if we could understand what this means, that, oh Jesus, let's go title, it's a shepherd. And maybe we walk around and, and maybe sometimes you get offended. Why so-and-so didn't call me pastor? What are you looking for? Oh, Jesus, been that big guy. I am the good shepherd. Nowhere in Scripture do you see Jesus bossing around the disciples. Jesus always led by example. Jesus, Jesus shows them what it meant to care for others. Jesus was always going after the lost sheep. Jesus was touching the untouchable, forgiving the unforgivable, caring for the lost, caring for those where everybody said, don't deal with them, have nothing to do with them. Jesus made time for people who, where, where everybody else looked down on them. The woman at the well, what did Jesus do? He went to go talk to this woman where everybody else in the village had nothing, they didn't want nothing to do with her. But Jesus made time. Why? Because of His compassion. There's a beautiful verse in the Bible that reveals the compassion of Jesus. It reveals His heart. It reveals His mind. It reveals how He looked at His people in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 9. Next, next slide. Matthew chapter 9 uh, verse uh, 36. Because seeing the people, He felt compassion on them. And they were stressed and... But here's what that word compassion, I want to give that word compassion, look what it means, make up. It means this, being moved by something that you feel deep in your stomach. This is what Jesus felt. This is how, how Jesus looked at His people and He saw them. He looked at them like, a, like, a, like sheep without a shepherd. And it moved Him. It, 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 was, it was such a strong feeling that He's seen. And, and what did he do? Look how he took it further. What did he do? He laid down his life for the sheep. Pastors are not to look at the sheep of God for selfish gain. Pastors are not to look at the sheep of God for an opportunity of popularity. Pastors are not supposed to be behind this pulpit so they can get a name. That's not it. 
Pastor Greg said it yesterday, pick up that the, the shepherd needs to smell like the sheep. We get that, we see that from Jesus. Jesus did the same thing. What did he do? He left all his glory. Right? Left all his glory. He came into this world humbly as a servant. And he got down to with his sheep. Got to see them eye to eye. Got down to their level. Pastors, I know that sometimes we get a, maybe a little upset with the sheep, but that compassion should never leave us. Amen. Why? Because Jesus has entrusted us with his sheep. Let's go to the next scripture, 1 Peter. We're going to read it in one translation in New King James, and then we'll get into the Amplified, but let's read it like this. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. The elders who are among you, I exhort. I am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ. And also a, a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you. Serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Let's go to the next slide. Amplified version. I warn and counsel the elders among you, the pastors and the spiritual guides of the church. As a fellow elder and as an eyewitness called to testify of the suffering of Christ, as well as a share in the glory and the honor and the splendor that would be revealed, disclosed and unfold. Verse 2. Pay attention to verse 2. Tend, nurture, guard, guide, and fold the flock of God. That is your responsibility. Not by perversion or constraint, but willingly. Not dishonorably motivated by the advantages and the profits belonging to the office. But eagerly and, cheer and cheerfully. Not domineering as arrogant, dictatorial and overbearing person over those in charge. But being examples, patterns, and models of Christian living to the flock, the congregation. And then when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will win the conqueror's crown of glory. The hireling is mo motivated by the advantages and the profits that belong to the office. That's, that's, that, that's why he, he steps into that role. The hireling is selfish, he, he's self-centered, and it's always about him. He, he's, he's the main traction in the church, it's all about him. What, what's to a gazda? Whatever he says must go, and you have no choice to listen. That's what a hireling is. The hireling, he, he doesn't, he don't understand that there's a chief shepherd. He doesn't understand that there's somebody who's above him. He forgets that Christ is the head of the church. And if you look at the motive of, of, a, of a shepherd, go to the next slide. What is, what is he to do? He's to tend, nurture, guard, guide, and the, full, the, the flock of God. This is what needs to happen. The, the, what, what, what's the role of a, of a shepherd? Protect the sheep of God. Install into them doctrine. Show them right living. Live, live, live the example for the sheep. I mean, a woman, I've heard this. I don't remember who told me, but... We, oh, pastor, he might be the only Bible that, that the congregation will ever read. Because I'm at a home, we, we don't get into the Word of God. Most of the people in, in the company, they, their only relationship is what they see to their pastor. Pastors, what are responsibilities, sir? The way we conduct ourselves, the way, what, what, are, what are we showing? What are we portraying to the people of God? Are we showing the people of God the image of Christ? 
So ask yourself this question. I'm not that on. You can ask yourself this question. Am I a hireling or am I a shepherd? Pastors, don't be scared to, to ask yourself this. To me, if you, uh, the Lord might lead you. There might be future pastors here. Today, you have to understand that this role that you step into, not for popularity, it's not to make yourself a name. It's not to uh, get into the biggest organization. That's not what it's about. So don't be scared to examine yourself and say, am I, am I a shepherd or am I a hireling? Why? Because the chief shepherd, the one who knows all things, he is the one who examines the heart. We need to examine our motives. Let's go to the next slide. We need to examine our motives. Examine our motives, our character, our actions. And ask ourselves, why do I preach the gospel? Why did I say yes to the calling? The hireling, what does he do? He seeks to build his own kingdom. He seeks to, to build his own kingdom, to have the biggest church, to, to reach out to, the, to, to make himself a name. Oh, shepherd, what does he do? He seeks to build the kingdom of God. Oh, character, the character of, of, a, of a hireling, he, he's selfish, he seeks popularity. The character of a shepherd, he is selfless, he has humility. Oh, hireling, he abandons the sheep. At, at, at anything, at anything. Oh, I didn't get my pay this week. I gotta leave. Oh, shepherd, he protects the sheep. Constantly thinking about the sheep of God. The shepherd cares for the sheep of God. The shepherd protects the sheep of God. He cares for the sheep. He feeds the sheep. Jesus, the good shepherd, needs to be our example. Amen. Jesus always had a, has a concern for the sheep. In fact, the Bible says it, Mika, that he laid down his life for the sheep. John chapter 10, verse 11, verses 15 and 18. Motopika, I laid down my life for the sheep. He gave up his life willingly. Earlier we just read the scripture in 1 Peter. Oh, Peter, he, he's seen the character of Jesus, his shepherd. He's seen the way Jesus presented himself. He's seen the way Jesus talked to the, the people. He's seen the way that he forgave the unforgivable, touched the untouchable. He's seen that. So whatever he learned from Jesus, he took the advice of his shepherd. He followed in the example when he told the believers in 1 Peter chapter 5 to tend, to guard, to guide, and to fold the flock of God. Because if you remember, a very, very famous scripture, John chapter 21, the conversation that he had between Peter and Jesus. What, what did Jesus say? Think of, Peter, do you love me? Yes. Then feed my sheep. Pastors, Future ministers, your love for Christ will cause you to love his sheep. We need to do the same. We need to spend time with the chief shepherd. We need to see how the shepherd and the overseer of our souls how he reacts and how does he handle certain situations and how, and how he always cared for the sheep. And we need to learn from his example. We cannot lord over the sheep of God. They belong to him. They're his. They're not yours. They're entrusted to you. He... he he entrusted you that you would feed them, that you would guide them, that you would guard them, that you would tell them the true gospel. And if you love Jesus, you will feed his sheep. If you love Jesus, if you, if you spend time in his feet, if you spend time learning from your chief shepherd, then you're going to love his sheep. John chapter 10 verses 1 and 3. 
Most assuredly I say unto you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs some up other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door and the shepherd of the sheep, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls on his own sheep by name and leads them out. Most assuredly I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. You cannot pattern yourself by some other pastor that you like. You cannot try to pattern yourself to be a pastor and try to walk in, in, as, as you're going to be, as, try to be Pastor Blasio. You can't do that. You need to spend time at the feet of Jesus. You need to learn from the example of the chief shepherd. You need to get that time and say, Okay, Lord, I'm, you are that door. Any other way, it, 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 it's not, not going to work. Any other way, any other idea, it's just not going to work. Pastors, we need to come to the door of the sheep. There's no other way. We need to remember that we have a responsibility. And that responsibility has been entrusted to us by God. So that we would follow the example of the chief shepherd. Pastors, we need to remember we are under shepherds Amen. who must obey and we must minister to the sheep of God. The most important thing the pastor can do is love Christ. And if he truly loves Christ, that pastor will also love God's sheep. Amen. I want us to leave with this thought today. Next slide. Jesus is the good shepherd, the great shepherd, and the chief shepherd. Amen. No other pastor. God will go after his sheep. This is his, this is his heart. This is his, and this is what God is saying for us today. Whether with you or without you, God's going to go after his sheep. God will go after his sheep and the hireling, he's going to abandon the sheep. God will remove the hireling if he has to. God will remove those type of shepherds who only care for themselves. God will remove them. When the shepherds only are worried about themselves, the sheep are left in a bad condition. I want us to understand these pastors. I want us to understand this today. Servants of God, listen. When the sheep are being neglected, they're left in a bad condition. They're scattered. They have no place to call home. There's no one there to feed them spiritually. There's no one there to guide them, to guard them, to fold them. They're, they're, they have that. They don't have it. But if we continue to read, for the sake of time, I'm not, we're not going to read the scripture, but in Ezekiel 34, verses 11 to 30, it says that God will search for his sheep. He'll seek them out. But Topeka, I will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered in that cloudy and dark day. I will feed them good pasture. I will seek the lost sheep with Philadelphia. I will bind up the, the broken and I will strengthen the sick. Because you shepherds who are neglecting all of this, I will do that. I, I, will, I will provide them a shepherd. I will do it. I, I will rise up somebody who cares for them. I will rise up somebody who's going to go after them. I will rise up a, a shepherd who's going to love them and care for them. I, later on you see that, that he raised up King David. And King David became that king who brought them back. But then what happened? Oh, King David, buddy, he failed, right? But then what happened after that? Oh, Jesus, the great shepherd came. That we need to follow into his example. 
Go to the next slide. I want to just give that picture. That is, that is Jesus. That's, that's his heart. That's, that's what he does. He, he loves. He protects his sheep. Pastors, future pastors, servants. Even if you are that flock who's been hurt by a pastor. Today you have to remember something. That you have a chief shepherd, a great shepherd. Who laid down his life for you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish this. I want to talk to the sheep of God today. If you're here today and you're hurt. Ask him, Lord, send me to a shepherd that's after your own heart. God, God, you would place me into a church God, that I can go and be fed. That I can take my family and not be afraid. This is what we need. Let's stand. Live love. You're the shepherd who searches and seeks out his sheep. You're the shepherd who delivers the sheep. When they're scattered, Deva, Lord, you're the one who gathers them. Deva, Jesus, what I pray that you would gather your sheep. Those who are hurt, those who, who are hungry for your word. Amen. I pray for the ministers that we would remember that we are under shepherds. And that we would remember that you are the chief shepherd, that you are our example. And Jesus, you love the sheep so much that you lay down your life for them. Amen. I pray that you would rise up Shepherds. Yes, Lord. I know that there's shepherds here today. Devla, I pray that you would just search our hearts today. Yes, Lord. And Devla, if there's any hint of a higher name, Devla, remove it. Yes, Devla, if we think we like higher things, if we're acting like higher things, Devla, if we've forgotten Devla, the purpose of a, of a minister, I pray today that you would remind us, Holy Spirit. Yes, I pray for every man here today that we will seek to be at your feet and follow the example of your son, Jesus. Father, we thank you for who you are. Thank you that you're our father. Thank you because you are our shepherd who cares for us, who loves us. And I pray that we will follow in your example. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.